right so brighton bridge is our next one and this is going to be quite a hazy washed out picture it's going to be trying to really go for atmosphere and using watercolors to get lots of bleeds and, and to really play around with that side of the medium so for this i've got my drawing all diced out on my piece of paper with a hb pencil obviously it's not the most complex of drawings which is really good because it means you don't feel so precious about it and you can play around and take a few more risks because you know you can jot down a second one real easy um, I've got my reference image over here, which is by Harry Shelton. Again, royalty-free pixels, brilliant resource for any artist or creative. Um, and I've obviously got my plan draft around here, which I'm going to go for around. Well, I'm going to explain to you all, obviously, in a moment. Over to my right, though, before we get started, I've got my watercolour set. So I'm going to be using a few different colours, which I'll explain on my plan, my A-team style plan over here. I do have a set of watercolour brushes, I have a candle for a little bit of an, a jiggery pokery effect in the end. I have a few different pots, okay, going over here. So I've got my brush cleaning pot, okay, with my brush and that'll just take it out there. I've got a cerulean pre-mixed up. Now for this, because I'm going to be doing washes, I've used tubed watercolours. Now tube watercolours give you a little bit more of a stronger hit than pan watercolours. You have to work up a few layers of those and I thought, I can't be bored with this, I'm going to be lazy. So I've got some tube cerulean blue, which I've diluted in water here and have a decent quantity of, which I'm going to have to do a wash. Then I've mixed cadmium red and cadmium yellow tubed in, uh, again, another wash here. Now, a lot of the time you'll see artists online have these flashy pots. I'm just using a yoghurt pot. You don't need anything flashy to mix your colours up in. Colour is going to be a colour no matter what, okay? If you're going to spend money, spend it on the pigment and the brushes. That's where you're going to really reap rewards. Or obviously always have a good watercolour paper. Watercolour paper does have like a bit of a sell by date. So don't use old watercolour paper. You will not get as great a result as if you've got decent up to date watercolour paper, okay? You do not have to spend a huge amount of watercolour paper. Uh, Windsor & Newton do some ranges. This is Bockingford out of the range, which is fairly cheap for watercolour paper. But you do want 300 GSM because with the washes, the paper has to take the expansion and contraction rate of the paint and, and water. Okay, so do consider that. Now down here, I was just trialling my colour mixes and checking that it all works out okay, which I'll talk you through in a moment. So the plan. The plan she says first of all we're gonna do a double graduate graduated wash which is a little bit tricky I won't lie to you but you know let's go for it you will therefore need to have a, a desk or some way of angling your paper to about a 30 degree angle because gravity is important in this process so consider that we're then after we've done our wash up here okay we're gonna then also do some wet into wet down here should be fun because that means it's about bleeding colours. We're going to allow that to dry. We're going to put in a bit of candle to resist some of that wet and wet. And then we're going to do another um, wet into wet for the darks down here. While that's drying, then we're going to go back and do our secondary wash in the sky. And I know you're all thinking, oh my god, this sounds like a plan from hell. It won't be. It's fairly simple. I'll talk you through it. Do not panic. Then when it's all dry, we're going to come in with our crisp, dark, neutral tint and get the detail up of the burnout pier. Easy, easy peasy. So, first of all, a double graduated wash. Now, a graduated wash is when you have a colour going from light to dark in an area. With watercolour, to lighten a colour, you just dilute with water. So the more water you've got, the lighter the colour becomes. With this section up here, if you look, our lightest colour we've got for this area is gonna be the orangey shade. Now, to do this, that means you have to take your picture and turn it upside down because we're going to be using gravity. We're going to have this as the strongest part of orange and then as it comes down, it's going to get weaker. We're going to dilute with water basically and that means the pigment gets a little bit faded. If you're doing it and it's too wet, okay, you're going to find it all runs off the paper. So do have patience and do listen to my timing. It will make your life a lot easier. Once that's done, that will need to dry, okay? While that's drying, we can work on this bottom section up here. And wet into wet is when you wet the area, you put pigment into it. While it's still wet, you put other colours into it. So you get all the different colour bleeds. 
probably easier if I turned the piece of paper upside down, but if I did that, then you wouldn't know which way up my desk was. Now, let's start, first of all, by wetting our surface of the paper. So I'm gonna take a large brush, okay, which is already wet. You see, I've just managed to blob over the paper, which I'll wipe off. I'm gonna dip that in my clean water. And I'm gonna try and take off some of that clean water so my brush isn't absolutely soaking wet like a mop. Then I'm gonna paint that top sky section, so all the sky area, with the clean water. And I'm gonna hopefully tilt my head to one side so that I can see that I am getting the paper because sometimes it's really easy to miss part of the paper. And don't worry if you go beyond the border, it's always wise to go beyond the border of the drawing. It means when you mount, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to where you wanna set the mount up, okay? So I've laid down my water. Now, the trick with a wash, or even a graduated wash, to make sure that it does slowly get lighter, is to time this perfectly. If you put in your, grad your color too early, what will happen is it's too wet, you put your line first of colour, it all just goes down the piece of paper and everything becomes orange, which isn't exactly the idea. Now don't worry if that happens, we can save it. You just blow it off with a tissue, get your brush, wet it with some clean water and start diluting the top section of the sky so that you've got a graduation. It's not exactly the most professional way of doing it, but it will work. So you're looking for when the paper is just slightly going off glossy, which mine is now, and I'm going for way too small a brush. Where did my brick, there it is, my big brush. Now with a graduation wash, the idea is that you take the brush and you go along the top like so, okay? If you timed it right, it won't run down. Then you dip your brush in some clean water, wipe it off. Actually, you aren't gonna wipe it off, you're gonna just do that, she says so if I do that again. So I've done my brush along the top there. Then I'm gonna dip in some clean water, dip into my color, and then go along underneath there. Dip into some clean water, dip into my pigment, go straight underneath that line. Dip into my clean water, dip into my pigment, go straight below the third line that I've just done, and I repeat, and should end up with a slightly stronger tone of orange down here, getting softer and lighter towards the top, just like that. Now that needs to dry. Right, so while that's drying, I'm just going to turn this around the right way, because it's generally pretty much dried quite quickly and I'm in a warm area. I'm going to work in the wet and wet up here because it needs to dry a little bit more before I can um, do the second layer because we're doing a double graduated remember wash. Now if you have found that it doesn't kind of graduate enough up there you could always take a little bit of water and just wash out the pigment. So use tissue and a little bit of water. The cheap, but you know, life's too short, isn't it, really? Now, let's do this second section down here. So again, I'm gonna use um, my colors. So I've got, you know, some lovely color down here, and I'm gonna do wet into wet. So, take my big brush, and some clean water, and I'm gonna wet this section down here. You might find that this time you want your page to be a little bit more flatter because everything's going to run otherwise so do keep that in mind. So I'm going to start putting in my orange around here. Now I fancy getting a little bit sharper so I grab in a little bit more orange. Oh yeah now you're talking. You can see that that's, that's more what I'm talking about. A little bit of cadmium. And I'm going to do a sky, don't worry about the sky not being exactly a match at this stage. It'll be fine, don't panic. Um, as I come down, I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue. And a little bit more blue. That's really quite strong indigo down here. 
Okay, so we'll allow it to dry, and while that's drying, we'll turn it upside down. And I'm going to add in a little bit more of that. Remember we went for a little bit more of an orangey twang? Let's take a bit of orange up here. And a little bit more. Right, so I'm going to turn the picture up the other way. And now that this is dry, I'm going to start doing the cerulean up here coming down to the rolls, the horizon, gradually diluting it just as we did with the yellow. I've got some fresh clean water. I'm going to swap that over because I don't need the cadmium anymore. Okay, so first of all, remember, you're going to take your big brush. Okay, make sure it's clean and wet not really really wet or you're going to be waiting ages for it to dry so that the colour doesn't run all over everything. If you're in doubt take your two fingers and squeeze it through the brush to take off any excess water and then brush over that sky section. Right it's just starting to turn a slight matte kind of shade which if you tilt your head to an angle with the light hitting it you should be able to see. I'm going to Take my cerulean blue, give it a bit of a stir, and go along the top of my now dried yellow that I then re-wetted. Then I dip into the water, I dip into the cerulean, and I do another line beneath. I dip into the water, I dip into the cerulean, and I do another line beneath. I dip into the water, I dip it's a graduation. Now for me, it looks a little bit too pale. You see how sharp this is up here. So I'm going to up the cerulean. So, and I'm going to use a pan. So see how much stronger that shade should be. Let's just put that in the top. And then gently brush it down to get a smooth graduation. Like so. Okay, and while we're waiting for that to dry, we can work onto the wet and the wet down here because this is now dried out. Now, what I want is this first layer of wet on wet to come through but for me to do a little bit more to boost up my reds and my darker shades where I'm using the indigo. Now, that means I'm gonna take a candle and where I want the colors to come through, I'm gonna use the candle and it'll give a little bit of a protection. But it, because the paper is textured, it won't be even. So it's just a little bit. Now be careful about doing this anywhere around the building. You're, you're looking more for down here on this right hand side. Okay. If you do do some on the building, you might want to take a knife and scratch it off because we're going to be putting on the building obviously. And if you put the candle down, you can't draw the building over the top of it. So do remember that. Then I'm going to take my bigger brush again. And I'm going to start wetting area down here. Then I'm going to grab some of my cadmium red. And I'm going to start, see how that's dotting in around where the candle is? And I'll probably get a little bit of cadmium orange. Oh, it's looking very Baywatchy now, isn't it? At and then I've got a little bit more of a kind of crimsony red to cadmium red to that left hand side. So splodging a little bit over here. Going around my building. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my um, kind of ultramarine, a little bit of indigo. I'm kind of using the brush on the side, so I've got this underneath section. Now while that's still wet, I wanted to get this fuzziness to the building, so I'm going to mix up a burnt sienna and an ultramarine grey tone. 
Then I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to start. Well, you've got to time it right. If it's really wet and you'll see pools of water, it's not the best idea because as soon as you put this brush onto anywhere really wet, it's just going to bleed heavily. Now, you want to bleed, but you don't want it heavily bleed or you'll lose any structure. So again, you need to tilt your head to a slight right angle right of the picture or the left depending on the angle or the light and see how wet it looks it, you want it so it's just about to change from that wet to the dry stage all right so if i grab some gray i start bringing that in also remember i've got that candle wax on the occasional bit so don't worry if it's not perfect this is a much more looser way of doing watercolors out. So we're using a lot of wet into wet here. And you should be getting lots of lovely loose bleeds around this area. You might find that you want to just take a little brush and give you those ripple lines. Now what we need to do is start working on this upper area. So let's take a little bit of that lovely bright orange just pad in a little bit more of that while it's wet so that I get a soft hazy mix and it becomes a little bit more red to the left so I take a bit of cadmium red red to the left while it's still wet now, while that's settling, we can increase the amount of cerulean blue on the top section. And I'm trying to leave out those wispy clouds. You might want to take your brush, dip it in water, wipe it through your fingers so it's dampish. It'll just give you a very soft brush mark. Now that all needs to dry and then we need to mix up a neutral tint and start coming in with the detail on the distance. So, cup of tea, cookie time, I don't know, whatever suits you. I'll see you in a minute. And make sure you clean all your water and brushes. Right, so now we're going to make the neutral tint. So that's to go for the really strong dark areas. We well, could do neutral tint or you could do the, the kind of traditional burn sienna with an ultramarine, which is very similar to a neutral tint to be quite honest. Got there so to just to be lazy <laughs> um, I am going to get she says um, a bigger brush so that I can make more of it quicker and then I can start working up the main structure Okay, and then I've got a little bit of purpley kind of grey tone behind, so I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue, some crimson red, a little bit of a lilac tone for that horizon, and just smooth that out. And hey presto, that's looking really good. So right, I'm going to take a little bit of my neutral tin and fill in these birds. Use a little pointed brush and you can get those in there like that. And there you go. It's all looking like it's going really well. A few zigzaggy water lines. A little bit more darker shadow to recess the horizon back. There you go, you've done. Really quite a fun, quirky little play around project. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a go, see what you think. And a lot of the time it's getting used to how much colour you've got on your brush and how you're holding the brush to get different effects. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.